Salido Mangahas. I was born in Rojas City, the province of Capiz in the Philippines, um, which is in the Visayas, in the Visayan region, right smack center of the entire nation, of the country, of Philippines. And I now live in the Central Valley, specifically in the city of Stockton. I work in social service. I started out as a job developer for the economically disadvantaged people. And guess what? That was just my second year of living here in America. I was economically disadvantaged myself. I couldn't get a job. It was a surprise for me to show up and I didn't have local experience. So I saw my own leadership during that time. I said, if I can help others, uh, because I broke the barrier at that time. I spoke English, just like people are surprised when you walk into a job and say, oh, you speak good English. I spoke English, so I, I, I went past that barrier. And now I have to do some local experience. I said, yeah, I can do this job. And these are the things that I could do. So take me, have trust in me. And when that happened, it was my time immediately to return the, the service to the community, to return that investment in me as a newly arrived immigrant. And I helped other immigrants find jobs. I also helped other immigrants start here. So the 20 years that I have done social service in has given me a myriad of experiences that I'm thankful for and I'm, I can talk about it endlessly in terms of the whole journey of helping others who have come to America just like I did and they made me see myself in them. That made me a more effective social service worker. I was still in the Philippines when I first got involved with theater. And there were other people like me who found theater as an expression of, one, the current conditions of the country. All the materials were taken away. Everything has to go through governmental approval. What was created out of that was really something creative. New materials, new drama materials were created to reflect on the conditions of the country. New scripts were written to reflect the sentiments of the people. Fearless as we were young people, we created the theater that took the place of the national headlines. We talked about what the people are going through, what they are deprived of, where freedom has gone, and we performed to a group of young, idealistic people, and we saw the connection. This is what they needed. The headlines were fooling the people. The national headlines, the newspapers, none of them spoke the truth, but theater, only theater during that time spoke the truth. And during those times, I said, theater is it. When I came here to America, little by little, I inched my way towards other forms of expression. I got engaged in organizing, and here's the word that was maligned this year, community organizing. I got engaged in organizing, and one of the things that I took interest in, because I knew it, was using theater for community organizing, allowing it to express the sentiments of people. And I was working with newcomer uh, Americans. They were Cambodians, Vietnamese, Hmongs, Laotians. They have just arrived in the United States in the early 1980s. And they still, they had to assimilate. They were asked to assimilate pretty fast. And the only way for me to use what little skills I had with theater, well, I call it little, but actually it was the fire inside me, was to get engaged with this other communities and ask them, how did you express yourself? It's about seeing the war and then you change country and then all of a sudden you're supposed to, you know, make it. So first I had to look back and see what were my strengths? How did we get here? Who are we now? And who can we relate to? Well, look at this face. I am Asian too. And I understand what it's like to be in a disadvantaged situation. And I worked with my, um, with my clients, so to speak, in my job, and after five o'clock, I worked with my community, and they were the same people. There are some imposed language on us as immigrants, like barriers. I don't see them as barriers. I see them as impediments. And you know an impediment? You can take it away. You can remove it. 
uh, barriers come from the point of view of the one who gives it to you. Impediment is something that you see in front of you, and then you're willing to say, shoo, let me get past this impediment. And then there's that whole colonized upbringing that we have in the Philippines. Whether we were born and raised in the Philippines, or born here, but raised by parents who kind of had the orientation of, uh, of a, a colonized mind. And that means that you are really in a position where you are undermined, maybe. You're in a somewhat powerless position, which comes with being colonized, and that the men will lead you, and you don't have the opportunity to lead. It doesn't work that way. It's having a voice, practicing that voice, bringing that voice wherever you might be, whether you are in high school as a young girl, whether you are uh, able to go to college as a, as, you know, as a Filipina, and whether you're given leadership roles in your community or not, find a place for your own voice. Because only then, only then will you become a potent power within the context of your small community or outside of your community. Forget what they say about, oh, well, the stereotype of women, of Asian women, which includes us Filipinas, that you should be quiet, that you should be reserved, um, that you take jobs that you can take off from and raise children afterwards. No, it doesn't, again, it doesn't follow that path. And it's wonderful for me to speak to girls and really see that each one of them will, be, will begin to realize that they can be an effective member of this community and they can contribute. They can contribute in the change that the society needs regardless whether it's America or any other place.